What is fusion? It is the ultimate clean energy source. It is zero carbon, zero emissions. It is always on, always available power. The perfect energy source, the holy grail. It's what we've all been working for and waiting for. We need to think about a way to get our energy system towards zero carbon, net zero. That means that we have to figure out a way to not only get rid of emissions, but figure out a way to, to have a modern, full power energy system that is clean and always available. We need fusion as a part of a modern power grid. You can't do 100% renewables. It is impossible engineering and economically. You can do a lot of renewables, and uh, a lot of countries around the world are making great strides towards that. But as you get towards the upper limits of that, the, the grid becomes un unstable, the economics become very challenging, uh, and so we need to find a way to have zero carbon, always available energy that is as cheap or cheaper than any existing fossil fuel power plants. We're not fighting against renewables. We're here to fight against the existing high carbon energy grid, whether it's coal power plants, fossil fuels uh, of all sorts around the world. We have to figure out a way to have a always available economical zero carbon grid. Our companies are working towards what, what we like to call the Kitty Hawk moment. When we have a Kitty Hawk moment in fusion, we'll be able to say that we have now proved that fusion works, that we can confine a burning plasma and get more energy out of it than energy in. That doesn't mean you're ready to put the fusion power plant onto the grid, but first you need that Kitty Hawk moment, and then you can design and build and uh, figure out all of the other challenges that you need to, to get fusion power onto the grid. So I'm not here to, to put on timelines or anything like that. I'll leave the scientists, the companies, and their representatives to, to say that. What I'd say is that what we're working towards with fusion power is soon enough to matter. Soon enough to matter to the climate, climate challenge. The challenge that we face is approaching the point where it's no longer a scientific challenge, but an engineering challenge and a financial challenge. We need to figure out the engineering to, to know how to build a fusion power plant. We still have some science to be done. Let's, let's be very clear about that. There is, depending on uh, which approach to fusion power you take, there is important science that needs to be done. But the bigger questions are about engineering, about regulatory regimes, about financing, about industrial design, all these other things that are really important to be working on while the scientists are working on it, while the companies are working on it. And that's why Fusion Industry Association exists, is to help with all of these other things, not just the science, which the scientists should work on, not just the engineering, which the designers should work on, but also the regulatory regime, the public relations, the financing, all of these sorts of things that you're gonna need to have the massive uptake that a fusion economy will need in the decades to come. As soon as we prove that fusion is a commercial power source, we shouldn't expect it to just automatically be taken up. It's going to have to compete. It's going to have to prove itself. It's going to have to figure out a way to get to that cost per kilowatt hour that, that other sources are at, whether it's solar or wind or you know, combined cycle gas plants, or battery power, or carbon capture sequester coal plants. Whatever the, the future zero carbon energy sources that, that we're going to be competing against, Fusion has to be able to compete against. I think it stands a good chance to be the power source, or a part of the power mix. Fusion is going to take money to start with. In order to get the money, you have to have a certainty on the regulatory side. You have to have public perception being in favor of you. You have, to, you have to be able to convince the public that fusion will be good and that they'll support it. I think we've got a good case to make and, and we'll get there. You have to convince policymakers that fusion deserves support from governments. You have to do all of these things that can then create a virtuous circle 
uh, that brings in more funding. And by bringing in more funding, then you can get more regulatory certainty, you can get more scientific advances, more people working on it, a better workforce brings in more money. We have to have a virtuous circle of more money bringing in more support in various places. I am optimistic about fusion and it's because of the work that the companies are doing, uh, the members of the Fusion Industry Association, but it's also because finally governments are getting serious again. For instance, in the United States, the RPE program has, has gotten started and has, has shown results. We're excited to see Department of Energy helping to reorganize the existing fusion program towards an energy mission, not just doing good science, but also reorienting it towards energy. In the UK, it's important to see that the Prime Minister has come out in favor of, of what he calls the STEP program, a spherical tokamak program. The 2020s will see the building of ITER in the south of France, which will be a huge scientific advantage and, and uh, all of our companies are excited to see the science that comes from the burning plasma in that. We will look back at, at this as the decade in which fusion moved from a sideline to something that, that people understood that it, it was the future. I, I am optimistic that, that the 2020s will, will move away from this idea of, of technology as just being around software, just being around you know 140 characters or social media or, or that sort of stuff, and back into the big things, the big important things like solving real problems like climate change. And I think fusion is gonna be the way to do that.